Welcome back to another Motobob video where you join me in the studio again with this incredible looking bike. It's the new 2022 Harley Davidson Lowrider ST. And effectively what it does is takes the Lowrider S and gives it a little bit more distance capability with some choice features. But does it do the job? Well, in this video, I'll go through all of the key details and tell you exactly what I think of it. But before we get started, a massive thanks to Pando Moto for sponsoring the channel. They make all of the riding gear that I'm using in this video, and they've also got some other clever products on their website that I definitely encourage you to check out. Recently, I've been wearing their base layer products, and what they do is allow you to wear regular non-motorcycle clothing over the top, but they're abrasion resistant and they take armor, and so they'll keep you safe on the bike. Perfect for town riding and commuting, especially when the weather's hot, and so I've linked to their website down in the description where you can find out more. A massive thanks to Pando Moto again for their support. So let's get stuck into this bike starting with the engine and it's the 117 cubic inch version of the Milwaukee 8 V-Twin. Both the ST and the S get it for 2022 so that's three cubic inches up on the previous generation. It's not a complete revelation. I certainly wouldn't be chopping in my previous gen Lowrider S to upgrade to this one but it just adds a touch more of what makes this engine really good which is producing bags of torque really low in the red range. It really does pull very hard when you get on the gas and there's a reason why this seat is shaped like that. It's to hold you in place. It's a really good looking engine as well. I really like it in this blacked out finish. There are some little bits of highlighting on the cooling fins and on the pushrod sleeves and then visually this heavy breather air filter that faces forward certainly adds a little bit of dynamism. Up top, both the low riders get a nice big 18.9 litre fuel tank, so that's quite a decent bit of extra range compared to something like the Fat Bob, which comes in at 13.2 litres. For me, the only downsides are that it's not an engine that loves to rev, so if you do like revy, peaky engines, this certainly isn't going to be for you. And also, it feels like it has the potential to sound great, but it just doesn't with these pipes. That's true of so many bikes though, from so many manufacturers at the moment. So it's not really a Harley specific issue. It's more to do with what they've got to do for emissions. And look, here's a little clip of what it could sound like. So yeah, it's a nice, big, torquey, purring engine with decent fuel range, and it basically does exactly what you'd expect. Now this ought to be one of the better handling bikes in the Softail lineup because it shares the same 43 millimeter upside down fork as the Lowrider S, and also the same twin front disc. So it's a much more sporty front end spec than you'll find elsewhere in the range. At the same time, it is a big, heavy, long bike. And so if you set it against any other non-cruiser motorcycle, it is gonna to feel cumbersome but relatively speaking it's fairly agile on the road. One of the changes they've made for 2022 is that they've made the rear shock a little bit longer and that jacks the rear end up ever so slightly giving you an extra degree of lean angle. Again it's not absolutely night and day it's just one more degree but when your max lean angle is 30 degrees you know they all count and they're all gratefully received. That extra length in the shock has lifted the seat height a little bit it now sits at 7 20 mil but still that is true to its name it really is quite low and it should be accessible to all but the shortest riders it's quite reassuring to be able to get your feet down easily on a bike of this weight and also it puts you nice and low relative to the fairing and the bars now the bars are quite flat but they are on some four inch risers so it does get them nice and high i found this bar position to be very comfortable it's almost at like mini ape height perfect for cruising and i also got on pretty well with the fairing they've designed it using CFD or computational fluid dynamics and that means that the airflow should be optimized to prevent rider fatigue. I first rode this bike in Spain where you'd expect the weather to be good but it was on the Harley Nightster launch. We also got opportunity to try some of the other 2022 models and actually the weather was 
rubbish. That's why I've had to reshoot this bit here in the UK. But even after a few hours of dismal weather, I was actually pretty dry on my body. It's only really from the chin that I get a bit of wind. And then also on the shins, you're a little bit exposed here. But in terms of the way it protects your body, it really is pretty good. There are some options in the accessories catalog for a lower screen and a higher screen. So most riders of varying height should be able to find a setup that suits them and keeps them relatively warm. Now at the rear, we've got these panniers. These are standard fit and they sit pretty high. It gives it a bit of that king of the baggers look. I think they're pretty well designed though. They're not massive, 53.8 liters, but it should be enough if you're riding in this solo single seat setup for a little bit of light touring. And they've actually designed them to make them operable by a single hand while you're still sat on the bike. So a nice neat little lever there to open it up. They've also got a damper so they don't slam open and you've got a little bit of net in here to stop your stuff falling out. And then you can of course just whip them off if you wanna ride without them on shorter rides and it still looks pretty clean at the back end. All in, I think they're nicely done, well designed, if not massive in capacity. Now we are fairly used to these soft tail bikes being pretty simple in terms of tech and in the cockpit and this is no different. There's pretty much just ABS in terms of rider aids and you get a USB charging port, but otherwise it's pretty simple. One welcome change from the low rider S is that they've moved the clocks. They used to be on the tank strap here and it did mean that, especially when you were wearing a full face helmet, you had to physically move your head to look down to see your speed. You couldn't just glance down. Thankfully, they've moved it up onto the bar clamp. You see this on some of their other models and it really is a nice, neat integration. There's plenty of information there. It's easy to read. It's at the right height. And for me, it's a big improvement. Now, to be fair, you can cycle through a few different readouts on the dash with this button here on the switch gear. You do get self-canceling indicators, LED lighting all round, keyless ignition, and there's the option to fit some Bluetooth speakers from the accessory series catalog, but if you want like bags of rider aids and a full infotainment system, you'll have to look elsewhere in the Harley lineup. Personally though, I think this sort of simple approach suits the retro stylings of this bike. And like I say, moving the dash is a small but significant tweak. One of the biggest selling points of this bike though has to be the looks. And for me, this new fairing and the luggage, it's quite rare that you can say it for luggage, but I think they both enhance the aesthetic of the bike. The only negative for me is perhaps the license plate placement. It looks a little bit, uh, well, it doesn't look very aerodynamic, does it? <laughs> perhaps with UK plates, they're a little bit bigger than American plates, so it looks a little bit more stuck out. But personally, I'd rather see it down the bottom at the back. But otherwise, I think it's a great looking bike. This is the Vivid Black. I'm not quite sure how black can be vivid, but this is the cheaper model. You can pay £440 for a gunship grey. That's the one I rode on the launch in Spain. I thought it was a really nice looking bike, probably worth a little bit extra for me. But like I always say, looks are subjective. So I'd love to know what you think looks wise down in the comments. And also let me know which one you'd go for, the black or the grey. Now on to the price, and it was always going to be a handsome sum. It's not a CB125 after all, and it comes in at 20 grand they start at. Admittedly, you could buy one or two quite nice bikes for that. But for reference, that's about 1500 quid more than the Lowrider S. And for the fairing and the luggage, I don't think it's too bad. The thing is with the Harleys, you always feel like you're getting good finish, quality materials, and it always feels like a lot of metal for your money. And Harley will always be quick to remind you that they do hold their value really well. So if you want to PCP it, the monthly payments should be fairly palatable. I think if you put two grand down you can own this one for three years for about 270 a month honestly i think harley have achieved exactly what they set out to do with this bike it takes the best bits of the low rider but that new fairing and the luggage just give it more comfort over distance it's a much more tempting proposition to do some decent days in the saddle on or one or two nights away but as always i'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below and if you're new here and you want to see more motorcycle reviews like this then please hit subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.